गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स यू आर मोस्टली वेलकम इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड हियर आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू टॉकिंग ऑन द यूनिट नंबर नाइन लिटरी थेरी पोस्ट वर्ल्ड वार सेकंड फॉर द यूजीसी नेट एग्जाम सिलेबस इट्स अ शॉर्ट समरी आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट इट सो आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू Firstly, here uh, I will talk for the introduction of uh, literary theory. Here I will discuss with you talking about uh, the literary theory. The term literary theory has come from its very own source, which is literature. that's why it also knows about the science of literature we can say that because we know very well literature is kind of writing it represents an organized violence committed on ordinary speech literature transforms and intensifies ordinary language it deviates systematically from everyday speech so literary theory in the context of literature it is the set of broad assumptions or ideas about literature these ideas act as different lenses used by critics to write and talk about literature art culture forming a theoretical framework for analyzing literature and for example when you say that the economic conditions its modes of production and class systems of a society or region of any given time determine the literature of that society in that period of time then you are making a theoretical statement literary criticism means begin interpreting the work of art literature culture of any society race or the age of time or era of time from that theoretical perspective literary criticism is the science of forming and expressing correct judgment upon the value and merit of works of any art form literature and culture thus if the literary theory is the framework then literary criticism is applying the theory in a framework critics and theorists of earlier times could be divided into two categories first one is those writers or philosophers who wrote about poetry incidentally second one is poets who wrote criticism as the poet critics in the first category we find the philosophers and writers such as plato aristotle immanuel kant hegel Hegel sorry Hegel Thomas Aquinas Longinus Dante and many others for whom literary criticism is incidental to their larger philosophical and political agendas for them the function of criticism was to give meaning to the invisible universe support Their respective world view. 
after all as god created so as the poet the theory of the creator the creation was illustrated through what the poet did the second category of the critics is which belongs to the poet critics of the english tradition from 18th century onwards they used criticism defend their kind of poetry so thus there is a shift from the earlier function of criticism to defend poetry to an increased tendency to market certain kind of poetry there were critics such as t.s eliot who talk about secondary approach in his essay that to criticize the critic dryden wordsworth coleridge samuel johnson matthew arnold and so on so we should shortly talk about the earlier critics such as plato you know very well plato was one of the greatest personality as a philosopher as a writer and he says that the nature of the universe is an imitation he was actually idealist he believed that reality consists of various layers and the top layer of the reality is made up of ideas and all the lower level imitate those upper ideas. there was another greatest writer came to this field whose name is aristotle aristotle thinks that ideas were implicit in things than existing outside of things so as pet so as plato aristotle sees art as imitative he sees art as imitating essence rather than another writer was there longinus longinus feels that to write largely to refute plato's disdain of poetry longinus work on the sublime deals first and foremost with the idea of transcendence but like but he was the first longinus was the first to articulate the idea that great art comes from a great soul was another it was there aquinas a q u i n a s he suggests that any passage could be read both literally and allegorically but allegorically reading could be broken down into three types first is allegory second is moral and third it is anagogic next writer dante algieri dante you know very well famous philosopher is there his work is important for a number of reasons number of reasons are there first one is his attention to detail impressed the modernist for example t s eliot and ezra pound both modernist strove to create works which could almost sorry which could also survive such close criticism that's why dante also helped keep poetry alive to the middle ages was another one geoffrey chaucer actually he didn't write about criticism and theory but his so many characters in his narrative poems talk about theory for example the wife of bath is best example 
there was uh, another writer philip sydney and uh, philip sydney work an apology for poetry is one of the best work for literary criticism in this work sydney begins with some general statements about human culture he says all human cultures are a blend of art and utility poetry is of prime importance in all cultures and in all times he says that poetry is more important than mere philosophy as it can steer men towards virtuous actions and philosophy cannot this poetry is greater than philosophy there was another way of criticism after early critics in which we find john dryden is one of the most and he was the founder of descriptive criticism in english all english literary critics before dryden were critics of the legislative or theoretical kind for example gascoigne puttenham philip sydney ben johnson so dryden first critical essay the dedicatory letter contains the germ of descriptive criticism however the first critical analysis of a literary work in the english was the examine that's why there was his next literary work was so much famous which title is the essay of grammatic poesy after that there was a writer alexander pope and as a critic he was not popular than as a poet but he has painted e w n e d painted is to write something criticism that's why there are is prominent literary uh, literary critical works such as essay on criticism imitations of the epistles of horace augustus his letters prepares to his edition of shakespeare's plays another writer eljones he is one of the best writer he has also written in grand political criticism for example prepares to the dictionary of the english language prepares to the plays of shakespeare lives of the poets essays and articles contributed from time to time to the rambler that's why he is so called last of new classics other uh, points related with the uh, the new wave of criticism especially talking in romantic age in the romantic age the aristocracies that previously controlled europe were falling and the middle class was growing and power was increasingly shifting to the common people makes perfect sense for wordsworth and estricolis poetry the criticism about poetry and it should be aimed at the common man rather than at educated aristocrats both meant a run away sorry both meant a turn away from elevated language and subject matter turning towards spontaneity and emotion like longinus the romantics believed that a poet was born with a great soul but unlike him they believed that ordinary language was the proper vehicle for the communication of that soul for wordsworth this means rural and pastoral language came from communicating with nature for coleridge it simply means that language spoken by most people at ordinary times 
Wordsworth was one of the greatest poet of England and he was poet and not a critic and his criticism consists of advertisement to the lyrical ballads, preface to the lyrical ballads, preface to the lyrical ballads, second edition. There were also works by stakeholders such as Biographia Literaria and lectures on Shakespeare and other poets. There was also criticism find in the Victorian era also. So here we find that with the reign of Queen Victoria between 1837 to 1901, Matthew Arnold emerges as the greatest name among the Victorian critics who's a poet turned a critic. Arnold started his literary career by writing poetry. It was only at the age of 31 in 1853 he published his first work of criticism Here are his critical works such as the preface to the poems on translating Homer, essay in criticism on the study of Celtic literature. With the emergence of 19th and 20th century critics such as T.S. Eliot and I. Richards, who values modern poetry so much, so that T.S. Eliot claimed that his criticism was the byproduct of his poetry workshop. In his tradition and the individual talent, he emphasized impersonality in art. At the same time, I. Richards separated the text from its context and he called such analysis of poetry without any reference to the poet's life that is called practical criticism. Thus, during the middle of 20th century, there is correspondence between literature and the new critical practices. Growth and evolution of literary modernism. There was a dominance of practical criticism by I. Richards. There was quasi Catholic criticism of T.S. Eliot. We find there was one school that is called New Criticism by John Crowe, Ransom, Alan Tate, and other ones. We will discuss about. Russian. So at the beginning of the 20th century, Russian formalism emerged. This was the group of Russian scholars. They expressed a set of interpretative principles, which is called Russian formalism. There were two distinct groups of Russian scholars. These two groups emerged in Moscow and Petrograd, P E T R O G R A D. The practitioners for this school were Roman Jacobson, Jan Mukarovsky, Peter Bagatarev. B O G A T Y R E V G O Vinokur and the Society for the Study of Poetic Language. And we find the personalities belong to Society for the Study of Poetic Language are Victor V I K T O R Shuklovsky S H K L O V S K Y Boris B O R I S H N Baham E I C H E N B A U M and Victor Vino Grado V I N O G R A D O V. These two schools had changed the direction of literary theory and criticism. There are some assumptions related with this. That they reject the belief 
yes literary assumptions related with the russian scholars how the russian scholars do for the russian formalism so these scholars reject the belief that the work of literature was the expression of the author's world rather it is a self enclosed law governed system for these russian scholars a form is a superior to content they reject they reject the irrelevancy of psychology and biographical criticism they advocate a scientific approach to literature and poetic language as autonomous having their own individuality as a discipline these scholar focus on literary analysis and examination of text literariness according to them the language is an important part of formal studies divided into two parts primary order language and secondary order language this difference between two languages is known as defamiliarizing the term defamiliarizing is coined by russian formalist Viktor Shaklovsky V I K T O R Viktor Shaklovsky S H K L O V S K Y This school scholars is a so called Russian formalists and Russian formalists were suppressed in 1930 by the Soviet government because they were unwilling to view literature to soviet's political perspective their influence continues to flourish in jhek c j e c h republic through the prag linguistic circle the leader of the prag linguistic circle is roman jacobson and with the advancement of literary theory and criticism russian formalism re-establish its grip its power in the 1960s in french and american structuralism there were some works by the russian formalists such as language in literature by roman jacobson fundamentals of language by roman jacobson theory of prose by viktor shaklovsky art as device by viktor shaklovsky there are some terms related with this theory also it's been a semiology and semiotics swiss philologist and teacher ferdinand de sasur ferdinand f e r d i n a n d d t e sasur s a u w s u r e he proposed a new science called semiology s e m i o l o g y semiology studies the concept of creating meaning through signs s i g n s in all social behavioral systems since language was the chief and most characteristic of all these systems it is the main branch of semiology all other sign systems were pattern after language because like language signs are conventional and different the meaning of signs are conventional and different ferdinand says that sign always need a signifier as a sign is dead alone and only the signified can control signifier as signifier and signified are two parts of the sign only a signified is a concept and signifier is a written or spoken mark there is another school is there structuralism next one 
the studies of linguistic theories like Sassoon, Peirce, P E I R C E, and many more were called structural semiotics, stylistics, etc., etc. These scholars believed that codes, signs, S I G N S, and rules govern all human, social, and cultural practices. Thereby, structuralists wanted to discover these codes further. They believe give meaning to all our social and cultural customs and behavior. Only these meanings are an investigation of the systems behind these social and cultural practices and not the practices alone. Their aim is, their objective is to discover how all these parts fit together and function. Structuralists say that literature is a self-enclosed system of rules. The system of rules is composed of language. It does not needs it does not need any outside reference except its own rules. For them, the function of literary devices is of cheap importance and not how literary devices imitate reality or express feelings. They say that if you are reading a book, then refer it from outer world first to understand it clearly, though every reader has their own individual meaning. However, the overall meaning of the text should be there collectively and, uh, and not separately. For example, there is no free existence of T as we make it following a particular process. There, in the same way, every reader has their own meaning while reading a text, but its collective meaning remains the same. Text is storehouse of meaning. Every reader finds their own desired meaning out of it. Thus, structuralists go for the collective meaning of the text instead of taking out its meaning on the basis of language or words. Major figures of the structuralism include Claude Levi Strauss, Claude C L A U D E, Levi Strauss, L E V I Levi Strauss, S T R A U D S. A. J. Grimas, G. R. E. I. M. A. S. Jonathan Fuller, Roland Barth, Ferdinand de Sassur, Roman Jacobson, Vladimir Prop, and Terence Hawkes. He was a French anthropologist. Uh, Claude Levi Strauss discovered the myth Lange, L. A. N. G. U. E and its overall structure. Langley and its overall structure allows individual examples to function and have meaning. Toss in his work, Structural Study of Myth, he presents a structural analysis of why myths from different cultures seem similar and based on recurrent themes that Transcend culture and time. He named structure of myths as mythemes, which find meaning through their relationships with the mythic structure. There is a next writer, Roland Barth, who is a French structuralist. He says the meaning of the text is like a building. A writer tries and gives meaning to the text, but it's the reader who has to analyze the text and find the meaning. His contribution to the structuralist theory 
is best summed up in its text its oblique jade expanding levi strauss linguistic model of myths group of structuralists called narratologists begin structuralist narratology science of narrative among them is vladimir prop who illustrates that a story's meaning is developed from its overall structure its length rather than from each individual story's theme by the mid 1970s jonathan kuller professor who is a professor of english and comparative literature at cornell university he became the voice of structuralism in america and took it in yet another direction in his work structuralist poetic structuralism linguistics and the study of literature he declares that the linguistic models used by narratologists which are the models are abstract spending too much time analyzing individual stories poems instead we must spend our time on analyzing the act of interpretation itself that is we must shift the focus from text to the reader at the end conclude the concept of structuralism i want to say that a comparison between structuralism and formalism russian formalism french formalism as all three have told us ways to read a text but structuralism purely applied those ways deeply and considerably post structure it's a, it is an outcome of the debate occurred around 1968 on the usefulness of the new approach to questions of culture art and ideology which found literature to be deeper and richer than the structuralist theory suggested post structuralism also sought to contend with the issue of determinism according to which the writer or reader operated in a rigid framework watching passively the interplay of structures as text unfolded the drama of conflicts aware of it it feels and in adequacies it became open ended so as to make way for other approaches to enter the field according to post structuralism as time is continuously changing so all the reading is misreading and all interpretations are misinterpretation this statement is given by jex derida jex j a c q u e s derida t e w r i d a all the theories of post structuralism are hypothetic because according to them the time is the center for everything but it keeps on changing always therefore time has no meaning and it is abstract rather there is meaning in meaninglessness there is the next concept deconstruction The term deconstruction firstly emerged in 1966 in Jacques Derrida's article or paper. The title of the paper is "Structure, Sign, and Play in the Discourse of the Human Sciences." It, which he read at Johns Hopkins University Symposium, French philosopher and teacher Jacques Derrida borrows. and amends this word from the work of german philosopher martin heidegger basic problems of phenomenology 
Derrida borrows the concept of Sasur that meaning in language is determined by the differences among the language signs and use it as a key building block in the formulation of deconstruction. He agrees with Sasur that one can know the meaning of signifiers and signified because of their relationships and their differences among themselves which is arbitrary conventional. Terms by S. Derrida Korea, difference, erasure, transcendental signified, logocentrism, binary opposition, monocentrism, metaphysics of presence and absence, supplement of the trace. Talking about deconstruction, it is investigated those areas in the text which remain hidden from view. The reader investigated the gaps in the text and worked towards a different construction. In this sense, every reader saw in a literary text what he or she wished to see in it and reorganize already organized material in consonance with one's own perception of the phenomenon. In simple words and easy words, we can say that every reader constructed one's own version of a text by questioning and rejecting the author's construction. There is a next moment in modern era new criticism. And this new criticism emerged in America in late 20s and 30s and early 30s. According to new criticism and its writers, the literary works have their own independent world. The literary work has its, its own identity, moral center and significance irrespective of the authorial intention. Readers and readings may change, but the literary text stays the same as the text is complete in itself and does not depend upon writers for its meaning. A text is read from various points of view. Writer encoding text, decoding and meaning. These steps, firstly writer, then encoding, then text, then decode, then meaning. Thus, the meaning of a text could not be explained simply by paraphrasing it or translating it into everyday language as a change of one line, one image, one word of the text which will have a different text with a different meaning. The term new criticism become popular with the publication of John Crowe Ransom's book, The New Criticism and its foundation was laid by new criticism foundation laid by t.s Eliot's work the function of criticism i richard's practical criticism and william emson's seven times of ambiguity the latter approach of new criticism was followed by i a richard's t.s Eliot, clint brooks david Deitches, william emson Murray Krieger, John Crowe Ransom, Alan Tate, F. R. Lewis, Robert Payne Warren, W. K. Wimsat, R. P. Blackmoor, Rene Velek, Austin Warren, Monroe Bursley, and Vyhor Winters. The publication of the college takes Understanding Poetry, an anthology for college students written by Clint Brooks and R.P. Warren, influenced new criticism in American universities as a leading form of textual analysis from late 1930s till early 1960s. There were some ideas, terms related with the new criticism 
such as intentional policy, effective policy, hearsay or paraphrase, close reading or explication details. Here are some ideas or features of new criticism. Firstly, the terms intentional policy and effective policy was coined by W.K. Wimsatt and Monroe Bursley. The term hearsay of paraphrasing was coined by Clint Brooks. And the term close reading is a layman squeezing. Keep in mind. There are some characteristic features of new criticism. New criticism insisted on the difference between literature and other kinds of statements. It looked at the text as an object independent of its author or the historical context. There is a distinction of the text from the author or the reader as it emphasizes the concept of structure and interrelatedness. The new critics were not interested in the ideas of difference, defamiliarization or deviance, neither are they interested in the business of foregrounding and deformation. The new critics pay little attention to the form of a poem as they believe in the organicity of poetry. They were overwhelmingly concerned with the meaning of work of art, the tone, the feelings and the implied worldview. They pay attention to bitter and stanzaic forms. The new critics simply shifted the author from the outside to the inside of the text. Instead of an author based on biography, history and psychology, we had an author based on the supremacy and autonomy of the words on the page, which means that the meaning, the meaning and the vision expressed in the world on the page. These all new critics believed that a literary work was primarily a linguistic artifact. It is a verbal structure. It was a co. It was a mode of communication between the artist and the reader. According to them, a work of art has an independent existence and it does not mean that art is divorced from life. Rather, they did not subscribe to the beliefs of the art for art's sake school. There are some works in the New Criticism such as Principle of literary criticism, the meaning of meaning, practical criticism, the philosophy of rhetoric, these works written by I. Richards. For that, Miss Emily and the Bibliographers on the Limits of Poetry by Alan Tate, Seven Types of Ambiguity by William Emerson, The Use of Poetry and the Use of Criticism by T.S. Eliot, The Words Body. New Criticism, God Without Thunder by J.C. Ransom, The Wealth Without Earn by Clint Brooks, The Common Pursuit by F.R. Lewis, Language as Getcher by R.P. Blackmore, Understanding Poetry by R.P. Warren, The Verbal Icon by W.K. Wimsatt and Monroe C. Birdsley. In this way, the new critic insisted on the links between literature and the real world. New criticism is humanistic and empiricist. It provides useful tools for the practical criticism of literature. It constitutes the English speaking world's major contribution to modern literary theory. After holding sway for more than four decades, new criticism has been displaced by approaches of structuralism, deconstruction, Marxism, new historicism, audience-oriented criticism. These schools insist on laying stress on linguistics, the context or the reader rather than on the text itself. But 
still new critics and criticism cannot be considered outmoded their work still has considerable validity in this way this was the most important tool in literary theory after that there is archetypal or myth criticism so here is a short break i want to take discuss so after a short break we are going to continue here next uh, concept uh, archetypal myth archetypal of myth criticism here archetype means repeatedly occurring signs images narrative symbols that occur in front of us which later becomes a message a rule or a social structure that control over language and words for example night is related to evil bad in auspicious archetypal or myth criticism is based on the works of c g jung joseph campbell robert graves francis ferguson philip belwright leslie fidler northrop fry maud burkin g wilson knight j g fraser and annie spratts fry sees archetypes as an recurring patterns in literature but charles jung sees them as primordial images that get stored in our unconscious mind they are key terms related with archetype criticism such as anima animus shadow collective unconscious some works are there anatomy of criticism by northrop fry the hero with a thousand faces by joseph campbell archetypal patterns in women's fiction by annie spratts the golden buff by gg fraser this is another uh, school in the history of literary theory the next one psychoanalytic crit criticism we find that peter barry in his book beginning theory he defines that psychoanalytic psychoanalytic criticism is a form of literary criticism it uses some of the techniques of psychoanalysis in the interpretation of literature psychoanalytic critic unravels the unconscious elements in the minds of the author study the creative process used for works of in effects of literature upon its readers there are major figures or personality in this them such as sigmund freud x lacan shoshana felman jean gallop norman holland george klein elizabeth wright frederick hoffman and simon lesser so there are some ideas and terms presented by sigmund freud such as id ego superego id represents unconscious ego represents subconscious and superego represents conscious there are also some ideas presented by jacques lacan such as imaginary symbolic real this is the work the interpretation of dreams by sigmund freud the four fundamental concepts of psychoanalysis by jacques lacan after that there are some texts which have been the most in the light of psychoanalysis and gives better understanding of the theories that persist Hamlet by Shakespeare, Sons and Lovers by D. H. Lawrence, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, T. S. Eliot. Both Freud and Lacan are tales with identity, growth, sexuality. Lacan adds a linguistic dimension to Freud's insights. 
the unconscious is crucial to the thought of both thinkers thus the use of psychoanalytic concepts is not limited to one literary genre or one artistic medium any human production that involves images that seems to have a narrative content or that relates to the psychology of those who produce or use it can be interpreted using psychoanalytic tools there is the next school that one is reader response theory which is also called reader oriented theory and the role of the reader for literary work or performance has been always recognized since classical we know very well but reader response theory is a renewal of a long and diversified tradition this this long and diversified tradition acknowledged the importance of reader for audience in the overall structure of any literary or rhetorical work reader response theory was traced initially with hist for example i a charles twis rosenblatt stanley fish wolfgang eiser hans robert joss i richards believes that there is a significant relationship between readers personal feelings and interpretation of the text textual analysis or we can say by closely examining the text a reader can arrive at a better interpretation of the text rather than by personal responses to the text a reader brings to the text infinite ideas through life's past and present experiences those past and present experiences help to develop the interpretation in the form of a reality check for the reader later whether those experiences are validated or negated that does not matter at all this truly helps a reader to become an active participant in creating the meaning of the text according to stanley fish text does not contain any meaning rather it is created within the readers experience the readers activities and experiences should be the center of attention considering other approaches to literary analysis reader response theory or reader oriented criticism does not provide a simplified body of theory for textual analysis those who call themselves reader response critics or audience oriented critics share concern for the reader in this way these critics in a unified way believe that interpretation of the text can be done when both the reader and the text transact with each other properly and not on individual basis solely that is reader plus text equal complete meaning when a reader is actively involved in the reading of the text only then proper meaning interpreted out of it i a richards only i a richards only focused on the text or we can say for him the text is primary and the reader is secondary stanley fish focused on the reader because for him the reader is primary and the text is secondary there are some texts related with the reader response theory such as the principles of literary criticism practical criticism and how to read a page by i richards literature as exploration or the reader the text the poem the transactional theory of the literary work by louis rosenblatt is there a text in this class the authority of interpretive communities surprised by seeing the reader in paradise lost self consuming affair artifacts the experience of the 17th century reader lefish 
the implied reader by Wolfgang Eiser toward an aesthetic of reception by Hans Robert Jaws, aesthetic experience and literary hermeneutics by Hans Robert Jaws. There are some key terms and their founders. Term Origins of Expectation founded by Hans Robert Jaws, Interpretive Communities founded by Stanley Fish, Transactional Analysis founded by Louis Rosenblatt. There is another tool is their phenomenology, which is also very important. Phenomenology is a philosophical method. It was developed by Edmund Husserl. It was proposed phenomenological reduction according to which everything which is not pervasive or eminent to consciousness must be excluded. Husserl, H U S E R L, viewed that the act of consciousness, the thinking subject and the object intents are inseparable. Art is not a means of securing pleasure but a revelation of being. Phenomenology is the important thing. The work is the phenomenon by which we come to know the world. When the reader and the text transact with each other, meaning was created, then the meaning exists in the consciousness of the reader. According to German critic Hans Robert Jaus, phenomenology is important that the social history of the text must be considered before the interpretation of the text as each historical period establishes its own horizon of expectations or all meaning of the text is not fixed or universal it keeps on changing from the historical period to another thus final assessment of any literary work becomes impossible according to german critic wolfgang eiser any text, poem or an object does not achieve meaning till a conscious recognizes or registers the object. Thus, object and human consciousness are inseparable. As I says that there are types of readers, namely implied reader, actual reader. There are works such as Origin of Expectations by Hans Robert Joss. Implied reader and actual reader by Ulugang Iser. There are some critics related with phenomenology such as George Paulet, Wolfgang Iser, Hans Robert Jaws, Roman Ingarden, and Gaston Bachelard. The short term hermeneutics, H E R M E N E U T S E. Hermeneutics deals with the meaning hidden beneath the layers of meaning itself. An interpretation of these meanings only will lead to the original meaning. Hermetics is a term coined by the French philosopher Paul Ricoeur, Paul P. Paul, P. A. U. L. Paul Ricoeur, R. I. O. E. U. R. In his book Freud and Philosophy, an essay on interpretation. In this book, Paul interprets Sigmund Freud's work in terms of hermetics. There is a next uh, uh, the next criticism critical school that is a feminist criticism important and uh, find that Simone D. Beauer uh, she says in the in her book The Second Sex to emancipate women is to refuse confine her to the relations she bears to man. Feminist literary criticism is significant and its development in literary studies started in the second half of the 20th century. It advocates equal rights for all women socially, politically, professionally, economically, psychologically and in many other areas of life. Throughout the centuries, other female voices articulated the 
rights of women acknowledged as scholars artists writers etc one such voice was afra ban in the 17th century afra ban is the first professional female writer dramatist poet and novelist of the restoration period it was she who earned the women's writers right to speak their own minds unlike most writers of her time she used her fiction to bring to the forefront and analyze uh, women's sexual desires directed towards both males and females some of her published dramas which paved way for the british romantic movement are uh, example the amorous prince poetry orunoko o r w o n o k o is one of the best work raban in the late 1700 another powerful female voice arose opposing continued attractive belief was mary wollstonecraft her first major work acknowledging women's struggles for equal rights was a vindication of the rights of women which appeared in 1792 wollstonecraft tells women to define themselves and take a lead of who they are what role they will play in society by rejecting the patriarchal system of showing women as inferior to men is another uh, feminist writer is virginia wolf who wrote a room of one's own and after that there is simon d beauer who wrote the second sex the sex is the fundamental work of 20th century feminism the text asserts that french society is patriarchal was controlled by males since the female is not male Beauvoir states that she becomes the other object whose existence is defined and interpreted by the dominant male. She tells women to break the bonds of their patriarchal society, define themselves significant human beings like the male members of society, and reject being labeled the others. Ahead, ahead. We find Kate Millett is one of the important writer in feminist criticism. She wrote uh, the work Sexual Politics. Yes, it is a new wave of feminist feminism begins. She asserts that a female is born, but a woman is created. Consciously or unconsciously, women and men conform to the societal constructs established by society. Yes, and uh, Millet uh, calls sexual politics. Thus, women must disenfranchise the power center of their cultural male dominance and shape the female articulate discourse and theories. There is another writer, Ellen Showalter. Uh, Ellen Showalter is the leading voice of feminist criticism throughout the late nineteen seventies. Uh, she wrote a work. a literature of their own british women novelists from brontë to lessing in it she chronicles three historical phases of female writing first feminine phase second feminist phase third female phase uh, so these were there and uh, ahead we find that uh, it is she uh, she wrote uh, uh, an essay to art A feminist poetics. In it, she asserts that feminist theorists must construct a female framework for the analysis of women's literature for the development of new models based on the study of female experience. Through gynocriticism, Showalter, Showalter um, exposes the false cultural assumptions and characteristics of women. depicted in canonical literature gynocritics and gynocriticism provide four models yes these four models address 
the nature of women's writing the four models are example biological model second one linguistic model third one psychoanalytic model last one cultural model uh, in this way uh, feminist theories begin as a manifestation of an uh, ongoing dialogue between women and men the revolutions that make feminist theories possible does not always happen in the public domain education history and literature are public institutions they have belonged to men for much longer than to women a feminist literary theories identify the uh, gender uh, bases of literature thus uh, uh, they also help both women and men defeat these bases by reading against them the argument is not so much between women and men as it is between feminist and anti feminist one pair of components recurring in feminist theories is that of sex and gender patriarchy is the ideology committed to male supremacy it is combated by feminist theories theories the feminist theories show up gender biases in the reading and writing of literature feminist theories negotiate problems of cultural difference and relationship with other forms of criticism such as marxism and new stoicism is use class and race respectively uh, so right uh, we find that uh, oh, there are some french feminist of 19th century in french fiction julia christie is there helen sixos is the helen h e l e n e sixos sixos Uh, C I X O U S. Uh, there is uh, another. Um, um, there is uh, another uh, school. That one is cultural materialism. So we will cultural materialism. Materialism. Um, cultural studies developed. in britain around the 1950s as a reaction against liberal humanism and orthodox marxism it was influenced by literary studies of matthew arnold the uh, arnold uh, moved from literary studies to cultural studies he wrote culture and anarchy culture and anarchy give importance to the elite culture this continues to be important in works of f r lewis a uh, great tradition written by f r lewis it defines the greatest works of european literature uh, lewis uh, defined value in culture rejecting the popular culture of capitalism and colonialism after them there was richard hogarth and raymond williams who talks about culture studies uh, there is the center for cultural and community studies cccs Uh, it was uh, set up in birmingham in 1964 by richard hogard and stuart hall raymond uh, yes uh, raymond williams founded it uh, will uh, raymond williams pioneered pioneered a new approaches to culture cultural studies have major influences of richard hogard's book the uses of literacy aspects of working class life and culture and society uh, that the long revolution by uh, uh, raymond williams um, in the late 1990s there was a restructuring of the university which led to the elimination of uh, cccs cultural materialism is a method of criticism it is rooted in marxism which stresses the interactions between cultural artifacts with the historical context uh, there are five types of cultural studies uh, for example uh, british cultural materialism first type second new historicism third post modernism and uh, next one popular culture and last one is 
पोस्ट कॉलोनियल स्टडीज सो देर आर सम की पॉइंट टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस एंटोनियो ग्रामशी यस एंटोनियो ग्रामशी इंट्रोड्यूस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ कल्चरल हेजिमोनी स्टीपन ग्रीनब्लैट इज अ रेनेस स्कॉलर ही कॉइन द टर्म न्यू स्टोरिसम पायोनियर्स ऑफ कल्चरल स्टडीज आर रिचर्ड होगार्ड ई थॉम्सन रेमन विलियम्स स्टोर्ट हॉल दिज वर्क द मेकिंग ऑफ द इंग्लिश वर्किंग क्लास वॉज रिटर्न बाय ई पी थॉम्सन रेमन विलियम्स टॉक अबाउट थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ कल्चर इन हिज बुक द लॉन्ग रिवॉल्यूशन दिस थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ कल्चर आर फर्स्ट वन इज डोमिन कल्चर सेकेंड इजिडियल कल्चर थर्ड इमर्जेंट और अपोजिशनल कल्चर रेमन विलियम्स इंट्रोड्यूस द टर्म कल्चरल मटरनलिज्म इन हिज बुक मार्क्सिज्म एंड लिटरेचर स्टोर्ट हॉल इज द फाउंडर ऑफ द जर्नल नेम्ड द न्यू लेफ्ट रिव्यू द आइडिया ऑफ कल्चरल रिप्रेजेंटेशन वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस बाय स्टोर्ट हॉल इन हिज बुक रिप्रेजेंटेशन कल्चरल रिप्रेजेंटेशन एंड सिग्निफाइंग प्रैक्टिस मेजर इन्फ्लुएंसेस ऑन कल्चरल स्टडीज आर लुइथ अल्तजर एंटोनियो ग्रामशी रोलन बार्थ माइकल फुको एंड पीरे बोजो माइकल फुको हैड लेड द फाउंडेशन ऑफ कल्चरल स्टडीज एंड वी फाइंड एक्स वन दैट इज ओरियंटलिज्म एंड इट्स इवेंट वी मस्ट टॉक अबाउट इट इट्स ओरियंटलिज्म यस ओरियंटलिज्म टॉकिंग अबाउट ओरियंटलिज्म द कंसेप्ट ओरियंटलिज्म वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस बाय सईट in 19 um, yes in his book orientalism which appeared in 1978 uh, orientalism formed the backdrop of post colonial studies edward said is a critics on a set of beliefs and representation built by the west for the east the practice of seeing east in a different way practice of west is a Uh, here edward said s a i d said he depicts orientalism as a discourse of power and knowledge and uh, hegemony the orients are stereotyped and far from reality the said exposes eurocentric universalism that takes for granted the white superiority in this way orientalism refers to the european cultural traditions of defining and identifying the east as other and inferior to the west also their orient becomes a projection of those aspects of accident uh, right the orients were seen as if not having any individuality orientalism enables the political cultural and social domination of the west not only during colonial times but in the present times as well. now it is clear to the readers that orientalism means several interdependent things and anyone who teaches writes true research about orient in its specific or general aspect whether the person is a historian sociologist or anthropologist is an orientalist and what they say or does in orientalism there are some types of orientalism such as latent orientalism and latent orientalism we saw that how seeds edward seeds orientalism return uh, it is a remarkable document of the production of the other and how it is produced is really important for us in cultural studies because when we look at the identity for its uh, production and culture then we are not only concerned about the politics of hegemony but also how it demands our discursive order something which is romanticized exoticized cannibalized essentialized so on in other words something which becomes a arrested attribute and played over and over again completely disregarding and ignoring and denying any of the complexity heterogeneity of the particular society 
so there are some figures in orientalism such as edward said homi baba trans fanon gayatri chakruti spivak chinua achebe wal swainka salman rajni jamaica kinkade and buchi emancheta so there are three definition of orientalism given by edward said first one is orientalism was a field of study in the west which is rooted in the 19th century pseudo scientific theories of race so orientalism is a way of seeing the world forming distinctions between the east and the west orientalism is a western style of hegemony dominating destructuring and having authority over the orient so that uh, next theory Marxist Marxism Marxism can be defined as a political social and cultural ideology it helped us to understand literature uh, and uh, as a literary critical approach it is different from other approaches to our study of literature in other words whatever we think feel or believe while living in a society becomes a necessary part of our society and under the specific system of production and distribution a society exerts an immense amount of pressure on its members to mold them mm, so their classes of people they have and have not constantly clash with one another and strive to establish or retain their supremacy in the structure they operate in marxism tells us that class struggle is the essence of a society at a philosophical level marxism provides investigative analytical methods which are superior objective and scientific to study and access the phenomena of history Marxism makes us aware of this fact that society is a living entity having constantly changing realities and growth and development are the outcomes of important conflicts taking place between groups sections and classes of people and uh, I hate we find that uh, mm, Marxism gives a new dimension to the study of literature um, with its help we comprehend the relationship between a writer and society Marxism has also helped literary criticism in evolving new materialist concepts of nature uh, concepts of culture ideology realism modernism political unconscious with which it effectively counter the onslaught of bourgeois theorist marxist criticism also tells us about the need to combine the efforts of the writer and the reader around a literary work marxist literary theory has its roots in the 19th century writings of german social critic and philosopher karl marx and frederick engels but marxist theory or literary criticism does not develop until the 20th century using karl marx philosophical assumptions 20th century critics developed marxist approaches into textual analysis that focuses on the study of the relationship between a text and society which deals with there are some key terms related with marxism such as dialectical materialism commodification auspicious consumption material circumstances reflectionism vulgar marxism superstructure and base there are some major figures in marxism such as karl marx frederick engels terry eagleton frederick jameson raymond williams louis uh, louis althusser walter theodor adorno edward ahern gilles deleuze and felix gotari two major works of karl marx and frederick engels are the german ideology and the communist manifesto is another work das kapital by karl marx 
there after that marxism and literary criticism by terry galton literary theory and introduction by terry galton on evil by terry galton so antonio gramsci coined the term cultural hegemony there is the next term that one is post colonialism talking about post colonialism Yes, we must talk about uh, that. Uh, talking about the post-colonialism, we find that the historical development of post-colonialism. Yes, so post-colonialism developed from a four thousand year old history of restrained cultural relations between the colonized Africans, Asians, and the Western world as colonizers, using the political and economic powers of Great Britain. The main imperialist power of the 19th century dominated her colonies, colonies, making them produce for them and eventually gave all their powers to the British. By the early 20th century, England's control over the colonies began to disappear. That is, decolonization has started. This event marks the beginning of post-colonialism or Third World Studies. Thus, in 1950s. With the independence of India, there is also the ending of France's long involvement in Indochina. Speech of Fidel Castro's history shall absolve me. The publication of Fran Fran Fanon's Black Skin White Mask. And Chinia Achebe Things Fall Apart. Now, after discussing about post-colonialism further, we can mention about what the writers and thinkers think about its existence. Writers such as Toni Morrison, Alice Walker, Gayatri Spivak, Gabriel Marquez, Carlos Flint, Fiennes, Edward Said, Franz Fanon, Judith Butler have spoken about the dominant cultures. They continue to remain loud about not one culture but many cultural uh, perspectives along with countless interpretations of life. They had spoken about the oppressed, oppressed. Mute ones by making themselves heard among the dominating and overpowering cultures, refusing cultural hegemony in the very existence of society. There are some works related with uh, post colonialism, such as The Wretch of the Earth by Franz Fanon, Orientalism by Said. Third World Studies is a term uh, which was coined by French demographer Alfred. Survey, C U V Y. There are some uh, post colonial theories, some such alterity, diaspora, Eurocentrism, hybridity, imperialism. And then, last one, uh, talk uh, the new historicism. New historicism is not a repeatable methodology or a literary critical program, so we sincerely hope you will not. Be able to say what it all adds up to. If you could, we would have felt the roots of new criticism. Sorry, new historicism were established uh, since uh, the Renaissance period. As during that period, there are various shifts in the Western theory of knowledge. This era of historical development offered a repository of cultural dialogue. About the relation between history and literature, though no one can give a brief history of the development of new historicism, its American form begins to germinate in the late 1970s and early 1980s, especially with the publication of Stephen Greenblatt's Renaissance self-fashioning from more more to Shakespeare, Louis Montrose. Essay Eliza Queen of Shepherdess in the Pastoral of Power. Apart from Stephen Greenblatt and other major figures and prominent influences, include Clifford Geertz, Louis Althusser, Michael Foucault, Michael Bakhtin, Louis Montrose, Catherine Gallagher, Jonathan Dolimore, and Jerome McCann. Further, uh, we can discuss some of the just among them, uh, Stephen Greenblatt, uh, who wrote uh, the book Renaissance Self Fashioning from Moore to Shakespeare, 
uh, in it uh, Greenblatt analyzes the writers such as Thomas More, William Tydale, Thomas Watt, Edmund Spencer and Christopher Marlowe. Uh, uh, in it, uh, uh, it uh, in his essay towards a poetics of culture, um, Greenblatt uh, uh, highlights how new historicists read and view literature in relation to culture and society using the ideas of two post-structuralist critics Jean Francois Lothard Frederick Jameson Greenblatt asserts that art and society interrelated and individually both of them cannot be used as it is a complex wave of interrelationships since art reflects society vice versa. Thus the new historicism viewed as a reading practice not a school of criticism. In 1988, Greenblatt expands his idea in his text Shakespearean Negotiations in which he develops a new term for new, new historicism as cultural politics which combines the developing theory better than the term new historicism. There is another one uh, is Louis uh, Montrose who wrote essay a Midsummer Night's Dream, shaping fantasies, figurations of gender and power in Elizabethan culture. Uh, after that, there is another one essay, Professing the uh, Renaissance, Poetics and Politics of Culture. There is uh, another writer, new, uh, another new historicist, whose name is Michael Foucault. He says, history is not linear or in other words, we can say that it does not have a definite beginning, middle and end, nor it is philosophical which means it does not take towards a known end. For Foucault, uh, uh, for Foucault, history is the complex interrelationship of a variety of discourses about which people think, discuss and talk. He says, Foucault says that there is a disorderly order in discourse and structure of power in society is expressed through the knowledge and practice of the language. Everything that communicates each discourse, whether they are symbols, signs, acts, behavior, spoken language, words, conduct, there is a collate uh, pattern of communication, but it has no structure. Next, uh, Foucault talks about uh, episteme, which means knowledge expressed theoretically or silently which will lead only to power and power will lead to knowledge. Both episteme and power are cyclic in nature and base of human society. Power serves in making the world both knowable and controllable. Through self-positioning, he means finding self in the discourse as we are equally the part of the discourse which is, is located in society. There is another one, uh, the new historicist whose name is Mikhail Bakhtin. Uh, he wrote uh, the work The Dialogic Imagination, Chronotope and Heteroglossia, in which he says, he introduces the concept of heteroglossia. Heteroglossia means the coexistence of varieties in a single language. Uh, there is another uh, term, dialogism, chronotope. Yes, this, uh, this terms he has uh, explained. Mm. Since texts are one among many elements which help to shape the culture. Thus, critics of new historicism believed that all the texts are social documents to reflect upon and respond back to their historical situations, and these situations were an intricate wave of discourses. Because any interpretation of a text would be incomplete if we do not consider its relation with the discourse which eventually helped in using it more and more. Thus, the text becomes a battleground of competing ideas among the authors, society, institutions and other social backgrounds. Therefore, new historicism holds the interconnectedness of all our actions and through its multiple approaches to textual analysis, it makes us hear many silenced voices of the past much louder and clear. Eight nine literary theory post World War Second. Yes, in syllabus of 
एन टी ए यू जी सी नेट एग्जाम सो यू स्टॉप थैंक यू सी यू